Hey everybody, what's going on? I'm DJ Sixsmith. Welcome to Sit Down. Dr. Orna Goralnik is back here with us. Couples Therapy, season two back on Showtime. Doctor, how are you? Good to talk to you again. Good to see you. Thank you for inviting me again. So definitely a very interesting time to be doing couples therapy. And from what I've seen, we're going to be hitting a lot of different topics here. We're going to be talking alcoholism, unexpected pregnancy. You're going to go into the realities of being a gay couple in 2021. This season sounds really fascinating to me. What was it like putting it together? So it was a really um, intense time to be filming. I mean, like all of us, the entirety of the world. I mean, we didn't expect the year that we had. We started filming like just a regular season two, great, exciting couples therapy. But like two, three weeks into the filming, the pandemic and the lockdown hit. So it became something completely different, um, both in terms of like the technicalities of actually continuing to work amidst all of this, but also in terms of the actual dynamics that unfolded between people being going through this pandemic, all the anxieties, illnesses, and then the situation of being locked down at home. So it was a very intense and important document. It was pretty interesting for me because I watched the special with my wife and you're doing all the Zooms and people at home. And then just to see people in your office again was just inspiring in a sense because it was just a reminder of what was. So how nice was that? Just like given everything that happened that you were able to get back into the swing of things with people. It was amazing. It was just kind of a taste of now we're kind of in the next phase of it because what we did is at a certain point when they were easing on the lockdowns here in New York, we created a situation that was safe enough to work in the office, you know, with all the precautions and the distance and all of that. So we could actually go back to the office, which was the first time after being locked down for such a long time that I got to go to work rather than work from home. Um, and that was so wonderful to be kind of body to body in the room. Um, you know, and now we're in this like next phase where most people are vaccinated, at least most people in our environment are vaccinated. So it just, it feels really hopeful and, and like a great feeling to go back to something that resembles real life. And there's just something about the intensity too of sitting across from a person and you know really talking things out and having you there as well. And like I said yeah. previously, we're hitting on a lot of really important things here. So how do you go about getting the best out of your patients and, and really delving into those top, tough topics? Generally, you're asking how does yeah. that- in, in general and then specifically with this season here. Well, um, the, you know, the, um, the unconscious wants to reveal itself. So if you give people enough space and you're actually listening to them, they wanna to talk to you. That's true about all of us. I mean, the, the issue is just creating the conditions and creating the space to let it happen. And you know, the documentary filmmakers that are responsible for making the series are true documentarians. So they're kind of masters at just creating a space that facilitates opening up and then I'm a psychoanalyst, so that's what we do by training is that we, we create a certain kind of space that is safe enough and inviting enough for people to just want to talk. And that's what people want to do. By design, we want to tell our stories, we want to connect, we want to reach and get better. I mean, all you need to do is just not get in the way, basically. It's also pretty amazing too, when two people don't wanna to talk to each other at home, but they get in front of you and, and they're ready to just unload, right? It's amazing what another, present, another person can do to really facilitate that process. Yes, yes, you don't need to actually even be a trained psychoanalyst. I mean, if you sit and listen to another person, they wanna to talk to you and the same for couples. When I think about your documentary series here, I think what's really interesting also is you have the long runway, right? I mean, we're talking about almost a year with these patients. So you really get to see the progress week to week, but when you watched it back, what was most fascinating to you just about the progress of some of these couples here? Um, well, one thing when I watched the, the series finally is, again, you know, the shock of what we've all been through. That comes across very powerfully in season two, you know, the beginning and then the middle kind of lockdown and then coming out of it. So just the shock of that um, was startling for me to watch and kind of difficult. 
Um, and then I think what you see, and, and I get to see that in my practice, but this is kind of distilled, is you really get to see people change. You get to see truly how they deal with certain issues, whether it's their own personal issues or dynamics between them and their spouse, and you see them change. I think people often start treatment not believing that change is possible, but we are capable of a lot as humans. We can change. And it's, um, it's wonderful to witness it. I mean, it's remarkable how much we've adjusted in the last year, right? Whether it's at home or with work or with our kids. I mean, mental health is something I've been thinking about. I'm, I'm sure you've obviously been thinking about it a ton. What do you make of the last year just in terms of, you know, mental health with kids? Obviously, you know, you have kids, you understand, but even with your patients, you know, what are the big broad thoughts you've had about mental health, given one of the most difficult times we as a people have ever experienced here with COVID? Um, well, a few things, a very good question. I mean, one thing is, um, this is kind of an overall thing, and it's going to sound maybe a little Pollyannish, but I really think it's true. I think people when there's a true challenge coming from the environment, from the world, and, and this year has been like an incredible challenge on so many fronts, you know, whether it's like people losing their jobs or people getting really sick, dying, fear of each other, um, fear for what's happening to the country, what's happening to the world, the sense that everyone's connected, uh, science, is science gonna save us? I mean, there's been so much, so many like, existentially crucial things that um, people, humans are capable of like rising to the occasion. They really are capable of that. Um, so in terms of mental health as challenging and, and we can get into like the, the specific challenges that this pandemic and the lockdown have brought for people. But I think the, the most overarching conclusion that I have drawn from this pandemic and from this year is that People, people are capable of a lot more than they knew. That they're really, they, they're, they're able to rise to a certain occasion, to a challenge. And that's something we have to remember both as individuals, as people in intimate relationships, but also as a collective, that we're capable of a lot. So. Absolutely, it's important to remember that because there's been so much darkness, but like you said, people can change. There's a lot of reasons to be hopeful at this point. And, you know, you mentioned some of the broad things here, but what specifically have you noticed with mental health? I'd love to hear some more in terms of really drilling down on some things. Here. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for bringing me back from the global to the <laughs> personal. Um, more specifically, okay, there are a few things. One is that um, one of the things that keeps coming up between couples and in my practice are that um, people respond differently to anxiety triggers. So, you know, this year we've had like, you know, the very big one, which is, you know, the pandemic, the virus, this like crazy thing that has killed some of us and left some of us completely untouched or unfazed by it. So, you know, it's like there's a whole spectrum of how you can imagine this virus and people differ in how they're imagining it and how they're responding to it. So some people get like incredibly anxious and, um, all they wanna do is kind of make things as safe as possible and as controlled as possible. And some people, they, when there's something that could be potentially anxiety provoking, they like to minimize, take distance from it. So those differences between people have been a source of a lot of tension for people. Um, so that's one of the key issues that came up and that underlines, it's sort of almost a, a symbolic example of the other thing that happened during this lockdown, which is that when you put people um, in close proximity and you keep them kind of with no exits, no one's going to work, no one's going to school, then certain kind of dynamics are gonna get exacerbated. For example, the dynamic of um, when things bother you about yourself, when you're not comfortable with certain aspects of yourself or you don't wanna accept certain aspects of yourself, you people love to project aspects of themselves onto the people around them that are closest and then start fighting with whatever it is that aspect of themselves they don't like. So, you know, more typically it would be your boss or someone at work or a teacher, but you know, if there's no one like that, I mean, you've got your spouse right there or your loved one right there and you start kind of creating these 
you, you start kind of dramatizing certain conflicts that you have within yourself by doing it with your partner and fighting and blaming your partner. So that's another thing that came out very strongly during this lockdown. Um, and then there's like, you know, more specific issues that have to do with the types of conflicts that emerged in the, in the outside world that found themselves inside the couple. You know, a lot of the stuff around um, the Me Too, mm -hmm. gender politics, gender dynamics, race and privilege dynamics that typically people like to keep it outside of home. There's no way that it didn't infiltrate into every couple's discussion about where they stand on these issues and who they are to each other. Well, I love that we can normalize these conversations for so long they haven't been in the home, for so long they haven't been comfortable. And, you know, Dr. Gronick, you're always checking in with other people. How have you been this past year? Because this has been a lot for everybody, but you're focused on other people. How have you maintained your own sanity in all of this? You're asking about me? About you, yeah. How are you holding up? Thank you. <laughs> um, I'm holding up good. Um, I have, I mean, I'm lucky to have like close people in my life. So I rely on relationships and they keep me alive and thinking and happy. Um, I have a very serious yoga and meditation practice. So that keeps my, um, my mind sane. There's some space to go. Um, I've actually made a real effort whenever it was possible to get out of the house and travel whenever it was possible. So that helped as well, just change dimension. And um, my work sustains me. I really love my work. I mean, I, I get inspired by people I work with all the time. So I feel very lucky that way. Well, you've inspired a lot of folks with this docu series. Looking forward to season two. Always good to catch up. Thanks so much, and we'll talk to you Thank down the road, you. right? Good to see you. Thank you.